Okay, so I'm delighted to be joined by former Peachtree United defender Chris Westwood. Uh, Chris, how are you doing, first and foremost? I'm not too bad, thank you very much. First question, have you officially retired yet? Oh, way back. Way back? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't announce it. I didn't, I didn't think it was important enough to announce it. Oh, I'm retiring. I just faded away. Yeah. Um, I think I retired when I was about coming up to 39. I've just gone 39. Okay, but you're still very much into your fitness. Every time I look at Instagram, you're doing a run or some some description. It's making me feel a little bit inadequate. Nah, it's only over the last couple of weeks. Um, a couple of my former teammates um, have got fitness companies and whatever, and, and they've done a free um, like a live thing on a Saturday morning. So I just joined in and obviously posted about it. <laughs> Just to let people know that you're doing it. Um, I, I wanted to um, uh, talk to you about your, your, your posh career, because obviously you joined um, in League Two, obviously, with, with, with Keatsy. Um, you, when I spoke to Keatsy, you, you sort of said that you got pelters, obviously, for joining, because you just come off the back of promotion, you'd been in Team of the Year, etc., as had you. Um, what made it so um, appealing to, to, to leave Walsall and come and join posh? Um, for me, a little bit was the manager. Because I kind of I knew him as a player from Wolves, um, and obviously the project that was given to me was obviously exciting. They were looking to go forward, looking to climb the leagues, which is what we've done, um, and that was that was the main reason. And obviously partly because Warsaw were they were messing around, um, give them adequate enough chance to tie me down with a contract. Um, honestly speaking, did I really want to be travelling all the way to Peterborough when I just moved back from Hartlepool to be closer to home in Warsaw? No, I didn't. But at the end of the day, um, you have to do what you have to do. And, and Warsaw were messing about. And obviously, when the when the Peterborough talks came about, I, I actually went and was spoke honestly with the manager, told him. I didn't tell him what team. I just said, listen, I've had an offer. and this is what's going to happen. And he was like, ah, oh, well, we're we going to do it. And I said, okay. I said, that's, that's up to you. You do it whenever you feel you need to do it. But I'm telling you now that this is what's going to happen. Um, and they, they allowed it to happen. Um, and then they tried to come back when it was too late. And obviously by then I'd already given my word to, to the gaffer. Mm. Um, and there was no going back. Was it uh, obviously you joined with Keatsy? Did you two speak about it quite a lot in terms of the negotiation? Was it the case of if Keatsy didn't join, you wouldn't? How would it? Well, no, no, I, I joined first. Mm. So I joined before Keatsy. Um, and obviously, Keatsy was a local boy. Um, Warsaw was his, was his, was his local club and, and he supported Warsaw. So, um, when I left, it was kind of a case of. We, we got the same agent, so I spoke to, my agent had spoke to, um, to obviously to the club, um, and we were in the same boat. Me and Keita were more or less in the same boat. Um, and, yeah, he, he ended up just joining because of the sort of the situation, what we'd been left in at Warsaw. Um, but the project that was, that was explained to us was, well, it was hard to turn down because... Yeah. You you go into a club that's looking to to get promotion, and obviously, part of playing football is you want the promotions, you want success. Yeah, everyone talks about um, that that year, the League Two to League One, in the sense that you, Keatsy, Micah Hyde were integral to a the dressing room, and obviously b helping the younger players through it. Did you when you joined? Did you see yourselves in that kind of role that you would actually have to help them? Or were you surprised to see how young the dressing room was? Um, no, not really. I, I wasn't surprised, but I, but I think I kind of, I kind of take that on anyway. I think that's the, the type of player that I was. Um, I think we, we, what, what we probably brought to, to the dressing room was a bit of, a bit of calmness when it was a bit erratic. Um, and obviously we had a, a lot of young lads who were keen to prove themselves. And I think we probably brought a little bit of, a, a bit of a steadying influence um, more than anything. But I think, I think we're probably, we were probably all that type of character anyway. Mm. I think it just comes with the territory. When, when you get classed as experienced or 
veteran or whatever it is, then it kind of just comes with the uh, with the territory. Yeah, I guess having got promotion out of the league literally a couple of months before, you kind of in your head knew what was required. Did you did you think at that point when you were sort of looking around and seeing the dressing room and seeing training that the players had the capability to get out of that league? Well, I think I think the start of it, I think the start of any success is your manager, your coaches. They they build a squad, and then within that squad you sort of form a bond and, and gel together and, and success success just becomes a habit. That's what we had. We had that at Warsaw. Um, we probably didn't have a good a squad as we had at Peterborough in mm-hmm. terms of individual ability, but we had a bond and we used to go into games and every promotion that I've had, it's kind of been the same thing. You go into games knowing that you're not going to lose. You go into games and, and teams, teams actually come and they start on the back foot because they they already come thinking, oh, we can't beat these. Mm. So you you kind of you kind of get a little bit of an advantage straight away. Mm. You, you mentioned the gaffer there. Obviously, um, the, your first couple of days at the club in terms of training and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, Rooster was uh, came with him, and 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 those two seem to be a, a perfect mix of sort of enthusiasm with it. I mean, it must have been really hard for the gaffer because obviously he would just come straight out of playing to, to put his stamp on it. Did, did, could you see it working straight away? Yeah, I, I think from the players that he bought in, um, and obviously the, there's a, a couple of players signed before me and Keatsy, um, from the players that he bought in, you could see that, you could see the identity that he wanted. Um, and it, it was just a case of getting everyone together and forming a bond and obviously he relied on us, the older lads to kind of keep the dressing room intact. Um, and the younger lads just go and express yourselves, mm. which is, which is what they did. It's funny. Cause I speak to Charlie, I speak to Welps when I was speaking to them about the sort of team spirit that was carved quite quickly. And, and mainly because a lot of the younger lads all lived together in and around the same area, cooking yeah, for each yeah. other, et cetera, et cetera. Was that good yeah, to yeah. see that you could, you could see that there really was, a bond forming so quickly? Well, I think one of my first conversations with the gaffer was um, he had a lot of players that lived out of the area um, and he had a lot of players that kind of weren't suited to the way he wanted to do things. And I think what he'd done straight away was he sort of got rid of them and brought in his own set of players who he knew he could rely on. Um, and they all lived locally. Yeah, they were all young lads. But they all live locally. They all socialise together, um, and it helps. Mm, yeah, you, you mentioned obviously it was obviously Keatsy. I think Josh Lowe was there at the time as well. Yeah. Um, um, players that knew the league and uh, the, the, amongst that inexperience, that's important because in League Two, it, it it really is a grind, isn't it? In terms of the, everyone talks about the championship being week in week out, but in League Two, you're going to some weird ass places in the league, <laughs> different places and, and cold nights. So you really need to know how to win those games. Yeah, it's tough. Um, I think mentally it's probably tougher than anything else because you know that Saturday you're playing, Tuesday you could be going up north. The next Saturday you go, you're going down to Torquay or somewhere like that. Um, and I think part of the mental, part of the mental strength that you need to, to play football is I think it's massive. I think it's probably bigger than actually ability. Um, but I think the good thing about what we had was we had a good mix and we had players that hadn't experienced it. They've come from non-league. So for them, they were like, oh, this is, this is brilliant. We're playing on a, on a bigger, better stage. Um, and they kind of understood the work ethic that you needed. Um, but they, had, they also had the ability to mix with it. Um, and he got it spot on. Well, obviously two promotions in two seasons, you could tell he got it spot on. And that, that first year as, as the season progressed, obviously with three going up automatically and obviously a playoff um, berth as well available. Um, I, I guess as, as you got towards January, February, March, you really felt that automatic promotion was there for the taking? Yeah. I think probably, probably, probably earlier than that. Um, because we'd built, we'd built what we'd built and, and we were going and not just, I think sometimes we were probably playing better and not, not actually getting the results that we 
we probably should have done in, in terms of goals, in terms of the amount of like chances that we were creating and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's probably it's probably earlier than that for myself. Um, but I just knew that it, it's kind of like when you get to January after Christmas, um, then it's probably a mental test because you know that you've got teams that are trying to catch you. Um, you're in that place. You're there to be to sort of be shot down. Um, and then it's about just keeping that momentum. Um, but winning winning breeds confidence, doesn't it? Mm. And I, I think we we'd uh, we'd managed to do that on on a number of occasions, and it just made life easy. Hereford away, not probably the most glamorous place, with all due respect to Hereford, that you'd want to sort of clinch promotion. Everyone wants to do it in their own backyard or do it with a, a massive away following and what have you. Um, do, do you remember much about that day? I mean, the only thing I can remember is the goal. The champagne after going all over my suit um, and the fact that it took ages to get home. Can you remember anything about the actual game itself? <laughs> Not really. I can remember it took ages to get home. Um, <laughs> well, I can't, I can't remember too much about it. Because, and I remember that because I was supposed to be, going, I was supposed to be coming back mm. to my home. Um, and obviously, because we got promoted, kind of took a different direction and, and ended up going back to Peterborough and we went out. Um, but yeah, I, I probably think the, the one thing I probably regret most about my playing career was not enjoying the success more. I think I was always I was always thinking, right, we'll go to the next one. Mm. We'll go to the next one. So when we got when we got promotion, yeah, we celebrated, but didn't really take it in too much because I was kind of thinking of the next season, right? We need to go again. What do we need to do to mm to go and compete and, and do well in this league. Um, I think that's probably one regret I have. Throughout my whole career, wherever I've had promotion, I've always been the same. I've never, never really enjoyed it as much as I probably should have. I've never really taken it in. Mm. Uh, people say that, don't they? They look back on their career once it's all over and you, you, you look at the like 20 years, however long you play, you think... That went so fast and, and it's very hard to slow down, isn't it? And, and as you yeah. say, enjoy those moments. And, you know, particularly promotions, it, it can be a little bit, you say, regret there. I mean, it can be a little bit like, did I really enjoy it as much as I possibly could have done? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I was always, I was always a type like, onto the next one. Hmm. Um, the, probably the younger lads probably celebrated more. They probably enjoyed it more, but I, I was always thinking, next thing the next thing yeah of course Keatsy, Keatsy scored the winner that, that day and, and and when speaking to him obviously it's always amusing to me because it was obviously a diving header um from probably <laughs> on the pitch um but that was the type of player Keatsy was and you knew it better than anybody of course in terms of timing his runs yeah he um he, he done it at Warsaw um we went to I think it was Bristol City or somewhere like that. I can't even remember, but I remember he scored half volley, went into the top corner. He seemed to just pop up at all the right times. Um, and he, he, he was obviously a very important part of the team, not just not just with his, with the way sort of he scored his goals and he, and he got them vital things. It was, it was kind of like the way he was around the lads. Um, and he, he was a he was a big character. Mm. He didn't he didn't let people he didn't let people stray away from the important things, which was for us we we obviously tried to keep our shape. Um, we worked hard, um, and you needed. I think I think the thing that the, the the gaffer got right was right down the spine of the team. He sort of got players with the experience and with the the know how, um, and then. You let your people like Boydie, McLean, Mikel Smith, you let them go and run riot. You mentioned the dressing room before we talk about the, the following season. Um, how important was banter and how far did it go? <laughs> well, I think you found out. I, I still, I've still got a picture on my phone of, of um, a certain somebody tied to the, the physio bed. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, I, I always describe it as small man syndrome because it was Keatsy that started it and you were very much involved in it. And the thing about that story that people don't realise that they've seen the photo, obviously, of, of me strapped to it and 
being out the front of main reception is a you didn't stop there you wheeled me into the the press conference room at the time <laughs> and left me there um secondly i i had to go to the barber straight after that um because i had vaseline literally all over my i had four haircuts to get rid of that um, <laughs> Deep heat went in places that deep heat should not go into. Um, and and, and that, that, that was a sort of eye-opener to me in the sense of, of how far you can take it. I, I imagine you've got so many of those stories whereby... Oh, yeah, that, that, is, the, that is the one thing about, about football. I could, I could tell you stories forever um, about funny things that have happened. And I think you, you need that. You need that to be, to be part of your success. You need um, an off-field balance as much as an on-field balance, mm. um, because when things do get hard, and they did, don't get me wrong, it wasn't all it wasn't all sweetness and light. Um, things did get hard, but you look back and 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 you look around you, and you've got your teammates that your friends with off the pitch as well as on it, and you know that if you go through a brick wall, they're coming they're coming through right behind you. Mm. Um, that's the way I always felt, anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. James, James McEwen ended up being part of your uh, sort of car school, um, uh, obviously coming from the Midlands as well. Um, is it fair to say that his age went against him in terms of uh, what happened in that vehicle? Well, if you're the youngest in the, in the car school, you, you just do as you're told. And if you don't, obviously you get punished. Um, and he, he took a lot of punishment, to be fair to him. <laughs> Do you regret any of that punishment, or do you just accept that he, he, he deserved? No, it? he's part. He's part of. He's part of where he is now. Mm. He is where he is now. He's captain at Grimsby, um, and he's probably got the character he's got now because of what happened to him during them during them times. Did Did he ever sort of say to you? In, in, I mean, did he have any control on music? Or did he sit, just sit in the back, be quiet? That's it. Or no, to be fair, he. he, he why Why he took a lot of punishment was because he wouldn't be quiet. So you're telling him to, listen, just sit there, be quiet until we get there, and there'll be no problems. But no, he had to chirp up, he had to try and hammer the lads, and, well, there's a consequence, yeah. isn't there? Found his place. Um, the, the, the following season, obviously, in, in League One, speaking to the players that were obviously involved in, in that, was a real sense that you could achieve. There was no sort of worry that it weren't going to cope with the level or anything along our lines it was almost like we've got the squad we know we can do it we're going to achieve promotion again is that how it felt yeah i think right from the start um of the second season obviously the gaffer had added um a few new additions and it was just a sort of a continuation by the way if you hear something strange look <laughs> Wow, there you go, you see. That, that oh. hair has been modelled there, hasn't it? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> <That's over. laughs> yeah, um, I think you just have a continuation of, um, of confidence, if anything. Um, and teams from above... <laughs> yeah, go and play outside. Yeah, te teams from above, they, they have the same things that because I don't think there's there's that much of a difference between um, League One and League Two um, in terms of probably your, your your top teams would be a little bit better but I don't think there's I think it's still all about organisation um, getting a team spirit um, and building building on on confidence so I think we went into the second season obviously full of confidence um, and you've got lads that have come from the non-league um, who are now even more confident because they've gone and tore up League Two, and now is the chance for them to go right. We're going to go and do the same in League One, and who's going to stop us? And then you have the teams that are coming to play against you, thinking, "Ah, oh, he scored thirty goals last season, or mm. he took the mick out of that right back, or do you know what I mean?" And, it, and it's just trust me, I've, I've gone and done it when <clears throat> I've had a couple of relegations. And I remember we've gone to places and thinking, it's going to be a long night. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, and I think that's what, that's what a lot of teams came, came to our place. And we, and we went to their place. And, and they knew that it was going to be a long night for them. 
Yeah, there were so many um, good players during that time who, who obviously had a, a major part to play, both in ability on the pitch and also off it as well. Um, obviously, George went on to have a very successful career at the highest level back with us at this moment in time. When he first came into the building, I'm interested because as a non-league player, as a winger, he wasn't blessed with an abundance of pace. He was quick, but he wasn't like rapid. Did yeah. you think, how is he going to find a niche on the left-hand side of midfield or in the hole? What, what did you see in him that you thought he, he can actually do what he's done? Well, I think I think he is quicker than you think. Mm. He doesn't look it because he's not sort of rapidly quick, like mm. like a Michael Owen quick. But he's he's deceptive and he run he ran with the ball really well. Mm. Um, but I'd probably say most of his most of his. Um, thing was his ability and and his football awareness mm. so i always remember him and the gaffer they always the gaffer always used to put him on his team if we were playing five aside or whatever the training was and the gaffer joined in he would always put boydie on his team and a couple of times i'd try and rattle him a little bit because to get the ball off them they had sort of had a, te- a telepathy um and he was just he, you could tell in, in his mind he was sort of one step ahead um and I think obviously that's that's why he went he went where he did and and he obviously had confident confidence. Yeah. You could never I don't think you could never knock him. You you mentioned the gaffer joined the gaffer always joined in and still does to be fair. Did you like? How that? Does he? Did you did you like that as a player with, with the gaffer involved? Yeah, I didn't mind it. Um, more the merrier. Mm. Um, I suppose when you get in a, when you get in the run around, it's a little bit of a. And, and maybe you have to kick a few people, but um, no, to be fair, the, gaff, the gaffer could still do it. Um, obviously, he probably couldn't run as fast, but in terms of a football brain, I couldn't get anywhere near him. Mm. And, and obviously, that, that season, as it progressed uh, on towards its conclusion, um, there were so many big teams that were being beaten, Leeds, Leicester, um, to, to name a couple, towards the end of that season. Um, speaking to others, they, they found that it was almost like you were indestructible a little bit. It just felt inevitable that you were going to get promotion. And speaking just then, as you were talking about momentum, I guess that's how it feels, isn't it? You do, you just turn up at three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon and know you're going to win the game. Yeah. Uh, and I think it, all, it also, it stems during training because you wasn't allowed to hide in training. There was no, oh, we're going to have a easy day today. It was, training was full on. Um, and you get out what you put in. And I've been to other clubs where it's not been like that and you don't get the success. Um, I think if you, I've always thought if you train the way you play, then obviously you go into games and you just do what comes natural. Mm. You mentioned when you signed the gaffer sort of sold, sold the project, the vision, obviously, of getting to the championship. Um, for, for a player, obviously, who'd um, joined at that particular moment in time, where was your ceiling, do you think? Do you think that you're, you were, you were going to get to the championship and we were going to consolidate there and then you were going to stay in and around the championship with the football club? Or for you personally, were you thinking, right, if I can get the club to the championship, great, I can put that on my CV, maybe look at another League One club to do the same thing with? How did you view it? No, to be fair, um, I, I would have loved to have, to have stayed and played in the championship. Um, but obviously it didn't turn out that way um, I just think it's it's one of them things I, I always thought we'll get one promotion and then we'll go for the next one we'll get another promotion and then we'll go for the next one um, and that that's the way it was I, I, I wouldn't really say I'd have a ceiling I'd, I'd go and play in the premiership if I could mm. um, whether, you, whether you succeed whether you're any good or not mm. you'll find out but in terms of um, placing myself in a sort of a, a pecking order, I wasn't really, I wasn't really fussed. I just thought you, you have to deal with what's in front of you, um, and we did on on both occasions, and then obviously um, went our separate ways, um, and that's just the way football is.
Yeah, to a certain extent, you were slightly unlucky in the sense that that season in the Championship, that first season in the Championship for the football club, didn't go anywhere near to plan. Obviously, managers came, went and all that kind of stuff. Whereas when we got back to the Championship a few years later, because there was a bit more consolidation, it, there was more time to breathe and, and, and the Championship doesn't really allow that, I guess. So parting of the ways is always difficult. But I guess from your point of view, you wanted to play first team football regardless. Yeah, that was, that was, that it's the nail on the head. Um, I went and had a conversation with the gaffer um, and that is exactly what I said. He didn't say, he didn't say you're not going to play. And my words to him were, um, I just want to know that if I do well, am I going to stay in the team? Mm. If I get in the team, that is. Um, and it was kind of, it was kind of like, you're not my first choice because um, obviously Gabby had, had come in. Um, but you're in and around it. It's up to you how you do. And I, I, to be fair, I was happy with that. Um, obviously, this, the latter part of um, the season where I ended up going on loan. Um, and it was only because I, I would rather... I'm not, I'm not the type of player I was. Forget about money. Forget about how much you earn, all that. I would rather go and play for someone for nothing mm. than sit and watch the team that I've, that I've worked so hard to try and get into play on a Saturday afternoon. Mm. Um, and that's just the view I had on it. And, and I've always been the same. I had I pretty much had the same conversation at um, Wickham and at Wrexham. Mm. Um, and I don't ask for guarantees. Let me just turn my... Um, Turn the charger on. Yeah, I, I, I've never asked for guarantees because I, I, I don't think that's right. I think if someone comes in and says, oh, you've got a guarantee. Into, if you're rubbish, then you're not going to play. I just, a fair crack of the whip. As long as I know I've got a fair chance, then I'll go toe-to-toe with anyone. Hmm. Or I would have gone toe-to-toe with anyone. I always find it quite interesting as a defender when you, when you look ahead and you can see George Boyd on one side Chris Wokedale, as it was on, on the other side. You had the experience in the midfield, demanding the ball. You got two strikers who are scoring goals. I, I mean, I guess it's very easy to say play it simple, but was that pretty much the instruction? Uh, to be honest, I think I've probably played most of my career playing it simple. Mm. What I'd done well was I organised. So in front of me, I'd make sure that Keatsy sat there or Micah sat there or... Whoever played there, whoever played in front of me, I'd make sure they sit there and my man can't get the ball. If he gets the ball over the top, I'd back myself to get it. Mm. I don't want him to get it into feet. I don't want him to be able to twist and turn and, and all this. Um, so that's what I did. I just think I just organised people around me. I got the fullbacks where I wanted them. Um, and sometimes it's hard because you have fullbacks, especially now. It's probably a lot harder now because they want the fullbacks to be wingers more or less. Mm. Um, now for me, I don't care about the wingers. I don't care about us scoring goals. I care about us conceding because if we concede, I take that personally. Mm. So f- from my point of view, I'm saying to my fullback, no, you're not going anywhere. You're sitting there, you're staying here. And probably the manager's on the sideline going, get forward. And I'm going, he's not playing. He's not on the pitch. I'm on the pitch and I'm telling you to sit here. Cool. And I think I, I'll, probably, I'll probably spend most of my career doing that. Um, obviously, uh, as, as a manager, Darren has, has been back in several spells. What, what makes him such a good, um, well, yeah, such a good tactician, such a good manager? What makes him so um, enviable to others? Well, I think he's, he does well building his squads for a start. Um, mm-hmm. Training's always good. Training's always varied. Um, and obviously, the way he played, he tries to get his teams to, to play football. And um, I just think he's, I don't know, he's got, he's got something about him. But in saying that, Rooster, Rooster was, was a, a big influence on it. Um, and they just, had, they just had something a little bit different um, in working together you kind of you kind of probably only ever had this at one other club you kind of have like a, a good cop bad cop mm-hmm. um but it could be vice versa one one minute it could be bruce as the good cop and then next minute it's the gaffer um but i i don't know i just i think some some people 
they just have an air of confidence, don't they? Mm. Um, and you probably, I probably went in there respecting him more because obviously I, 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 I was in, well, I say I was in this, I was in the same squad at Wolves. Um, in terms of management, I'd obviously played against him when he was at Wrexham and I knew what type of player he was, so I knew what type of football he was going to play. Um, and I think he just he just has this something about him. Um, and obviously, he's got Strack there now. He has, yes. Um, Strack's. Is- I, th- I think Strack's the same. I think Strack has the same type of type of thing about him. Mm. Even even McLean's even McLean's a coach now. Yeah, yeah. McLean's probably. I didn't see him. I didn't see him being a coach. To be honest, I didn't see it. But um, I think he probably brings. Like the lighter side to it, he can probably sort of talk to players on a level um, without coming across as I'm a boss. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I think the gaffer. You always respected the gaffer because, yeah, he, he would. He was a good man manager, um, and he would talk to you on a level. But you respected him as a boss. You knew that you could only go so far. Um, I think McLean's probably like a little bit more jokey with the players and he probably gets he probably gets the best out of the players by being that way um they probably the players probably look up to him yeah, yeah. Um, in, in a way I, I i always think when, when you when you look back to that time we, we talked about stuff that's on the pitch and i always found pre-season really enjoyable to watch because obviously despite the fact that i was trying to get a tan in uh, spain or portugal wherever it was from failing miserably it always it always felt like a really important time and you, you always seem to have the right kind of build up to the season as well with the friendlies the games that you played and did you were you sort of player that i mean no player enjoys pre-season but you seem to relish it you always seem to have a smile on your face even though you're probably going through pain to get there yeah it was it was horrible but then that's what pre-season is mm. um, and i've always i've always thought you won't get nothing out unless you put something in. Um, and I think that's where it started with us. So obviously me and Keatsy had signed. We hadn't met anyone but apart from the gaffer. <laughs> we hadn't met anyone until July the 1st. Then we flew straight out to Marbella. Yeah. Um, met the lads at the airport. We got our track suits, went into the toilets and put our track suits on. Um, and that was it. We were, and we were kind of like, I knew a couple of players from obviously playing against them, whatever. And then, we went to we went to was it La Cala? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went there and and we just we just formed a bond. Um, and I think probably seeing seeing probably myself, Yikitsis, Micahs, Newts at the time, um, Lowy, working so hard. Probably the, the, the younger lads, because I always think that, like I said to you before, mentally. You have to be on it. Mm. And there's only you that can stop yourself running. There's only you that can stop yourself doing what you do. Um, so I think probably seeing the older lads grafting and going through the mill, don't get me wrong, a lot of the times I try to smile for it, but <laughs> I couldn't wait to jump in that cold pool at the end. Um, and I suppose seeing us do it, thinking, oh, you've got lads that have played at a higher level, and they just sort of got on board with it and worked out that hard work is the only way forward. I'm sure your night in Porto Benus helped as well, though, didn't it? Um, I think the, fir- the first time we didn't actually go. Me, me, Keatsy and Morgs, we actually went, we went to Fengarola. Fengarola. Yeah, I, 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 do, I do remember, the because I remember as a media team, we sort of drove around the, the bay and the, all, the, all the yachts and all that kind of stuff. And I um, remember thinking, should we, should we go out and put oh, I don't think it's our style, to be fair. I don't, I don't think we'd fit in somehow. I'm not too sure. Fleet to to be honest, that's why we didn't go. Me, Keatsy and Morgs, we were a bit like, we'd, we obviously we'd had a hard week, um, which had culminated in the game. Um, and we just wanted to go out and have a few beers and, and sort of let your hair down. And I thought, in at Port of Anus, it's kind of like a bit of a goldfish bowl. Um, and if you've got too many lads, obviously you've got the young lads that are, that are out there like, hey, this is the life. We're in Port of Anus and we kind of just give it a little swerve and we got in a taxi and went to Fengarola. 
Um, just a final couple of questions. I mean, you played with some, some great players during your time at Posh. Everyone knows about the Boydies, the McLeans, the Mikhail Smiths and, and how integral that they were. Um, is there anybody that you, you felt was uh, sort of ran under, under the radar and was an important cog in either the dressing room or, or the actual uh, team itself? Um, I think everyone played the part. Um, obviously, you need... I think you do need your sprinkles of experience, um, but not sort of dampening down the youthful mm. enthusiasm that the younger lads were bringing. Um, I think Jamie Day was probably the one that, obviously, I, I know he had he had his injury, mm. and I think I probably could have seen him going on and playing at a higher level if if what happened hadn't have happened. Um, but now I, I think I think everyone played the part. I don't think you could sort of pick out any one one player or and and say oh he was this or he was this. You, obviously, you have you have we probably had eight eight players, steady players that allow your your more flamboyant players to to go and do their stuff. Um, but I think you, you probably find that in in most teams. Um, it was just about it was just about the balance and getting everyone sort of pulling in the right direction. Last two questions. Well, question number one, any other press officer get tied up in your career? Or was it just me? No, I think, I think you are the only one. There's been a few pranks played on press officers, but I think that probably tops it. Excellent. Nice to be isolated. And secondly, um, in, in, in terms of what you're doing now, obviously you said you retired. Um, what's, what's the day to day for Chris Westwood now? Um, I just spend most of my time on a golf course. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't even like golf. I've never played golf in my life. Um, so now I work um, in support. So I work with people with like mental health, um, which is, is probably a lot easier than working in some of the dressing rooms that I've been in. Um, kind of just fell into it. I was playing. I was playing part time, um, and was was doing that part time, and then. Um, when I finished, finished at a club called Alzo in town. Um, kind of like I got to a stage. Never thought I would. I got to a stage where I kind of like fell out of love a little bit. Yeah, it, it was. You'd have like players that probably even three, four years back wouldn't have got anywhere near you. They're now like sort of running past you and going, "Ah, oh, look what I'm doing," and I'm thinking. I can't have that. So when I finished out, I ended up doing it full time. Mm. Um, and yeah, that's what I do.